Welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. Old generation private sector lender Karur Vaishya Bank more than 100 years old. The Karur headquarter lender never chased growth like some of the high street banks in Bombay. Still, it managed to draw investors' attention. The bank reported a healthy set of numbers in the first quarter with improved margin and lower provisions. The return on asset has also shown improving trend and has now remained over 1% for the second consecutive quarter. To speak more about the bank, we have today uh, B. Ba Ramesh Babu, Managing Director and Chief Executive uh, Officer of uh, Karur Vaisha Bank. Mr. Babu will also complete two years as MD and CEO on July 30. Mr. Babu, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manajit. Thanks for the opportunity. This is a bank in the 106 years, continuously we have been declaring uh, the, the, we have been declaring profit. So none of the years we had any issue. So that is the legacy of this bank. Right, sir. So I was coming to the performance. Uh, the performance, as I said, in the first quarter was very good. But the bank is, as you said, uh, as we know, it's 100 year old. The loan book of the bank as on, as on June end was 59,612 crore. And the deposits are of 71,168 crore. Uh, do you, after 100 years, you have done about 60,000 crores of deposit. Do you think that the bank has lost out to competition over the years by um, in increasing the market share? I, I see we need to look at it in a different lens because initially when the bank started, so it was catering to local traders and all in a limited area of operation they were doing and all. The pan-India presence and that uh, uh, scope enlargement, these things have come around 20, 25 years back. At that time, we started enlarging into other areas and we started focusing on the MSME. If you look at our portfolio also, around 2008, 9, something like that, we have started entered into the wholesale corporate. And we were there from some time. And in 2019 or 18, something like that, we have entered into the retail. Till such time, few of the customers, their requirement was handled and all. Not We were not aggressive in the retail. So that way, if you look at it progressively, vertical after vertical, we have grown. And now we can say that entire suite of products, what all are required, either wholesale or retail, everything is being offered. With the momentum, what we have gained in the first quarter during last year, also you would have seen that our advances growth is 15% if you do not reckon the write-off. So the momentum, what we have gained, so we are reasonably confident that the required market share will be able to get it. Now, the bank has about uh, 822 branches as of 31st March uh, uh, 2022, uh, but half of the branches are in, in Tamil Nadu. There are branches in, in Andhra and Telangana and Karnataka and a few more in Maharashtra and Gujarat. So you never thought of becoming a pan-India branch with opening more branches in the northern or eastern parts of the country? No, uh, you, we have a branch in Patna. We have a branch in Indore. We have a branch in Chandigarh. So different parts, Kanpur we have. So likewise, different locations, we have the branches. But the concentration is in the south and the west. So where still we feel that lot of potential which we need to exploit is still there. In the west also it is there. But that way, whenever we are going for the expansion, we are looking at what are the opportunities available. And based on that, we are going there. The, uh, I, I saw your post earning presentation. It says interesting statistics. It said that 68% uh, of the corporate loans are less than 100 crore, with average ticket size of 37.72 crore. It looked like it's a conscious strategy to stay away from the large corporate, the large wholesale loans. Why is this so? It is not the question of staying away. So when the infrastructure boom was going on in India, around 11, 12 and all, so in the bandwagon, we also joined. But we need to understand what is the size of the bank. If we cannot compete with a bigger bank, so we need to understand the business model. In this process, we had some hits and misses also were there in the corporate portfolio. So then with the learnings, what all we had, uh, we in the last three, four years, we have put so many uh, restrictive conditions in, say, internally, saying that the one of the conditions, what I can say, so 125 crores beyond that, we will not take an exposure. We thought that because we suppose some, tomorrow something happens, we may not be able to absorb that shock. That is one thing. Likewise, what we thought, we need to know the business model of the particular unit. Then only you need to. And third thing, what we thought is to prefer the sole banking, wherever these bankers also construction is there, three to four banks are there, where you also matter a lot. These sort of thing. And fourth, what we thought manufacturing also let us do up to 75 crore, which comprise of MSMEs where the pricing power and the yields are better. Even if the hits are there also, 
which your normal earnings, what all you have, you'll be able to absorb that loss very comfortably. Otherwise, let us say 300 crore account goes bad. Suppose, let us say your profit itself for a quarter is 250 crore. So, one quarter profit is wiped out, it may not be good for the organization. So, that way we have diversified, we have put these restrictions. Intention is to grow granular. But if you look at our 2016 corporate portfolio, it was 35% of the whole book. Now it has come down to 23 because of the shift we have taken for moving from uh, lumpy accounts to the granular. So 23%. But one, more, one, more, one more thing I want to say. In the process, we have achieved one more thing. The quality of the portfolio we have achieved. Many of the accounts which are not good also we have exited. Now if you look at it, the whole band, the SMA 30 plus is below 1%. Out of that, the corporate book is minuscule under SMA 30 plus. So the quality of the book has improved and we have tighter controls on this. And overall, the granularization also has happened. So you're saying 23%, only 23% of your book is wholesale loans, corporate loans. And the remaining is, is retail and agriculture and all. Absolutely, absolutely. You are right. Uh, what is the share of whole, uh, home loans in your portfolio? Yeah, we have other segments are also there. One is a commercial is next big segment for us. And retail is there. Retail also constitutes around 23-24% of our portfolio. Out of that, more than 50% constitutes a home loan. Because mortgage loans, home loan as well as LAP, both we together we treat it as a mortgage loan. So that occupies a major portion of our retail loans. And next comes the jewel loan. And the personal loans, what all are there because of our customers? We effectively use our analytics and artificial intelligence. Based on that, we dive the data and all we'll take out. And that we are doing. That way, our focus on the retail loan is particularly mortgage, jewel, and personal loan. And this year, uh, we want to push these two products. Sir, you have revised the credit growth target for FI23 from 12% from to 15%. What made you revise the credit growth? Yeah, if you see, in the initial month, April month, Things were slightly uncertain, how it's going to pan out. How So with all these things, people were talking about recession, how things will move. So we wanted to be cautious and we thought under-promising and over-delivering will be much better. And we'll have a clarity also. We thought, let us go for a 12%. But after seeing the first quarter uh, progress and all, both on year-on-year -year as well as in the quarter-on-quarter, -quarter, if you look at it, so we have grown around 15% in advances, if we reckon, uh, right off also, otherwise 14%. Then we thought... The first quarter itself usually is a sluggish quarter. When the first quarter we are able to do well, rest of the quarters will be able to do much better and all. Which of the segments uh, you think will contribute to this growth? So basically when the bank started, our focus was on the traders. So even today, if you look at it, 32% of our portfolio is coming from the commercial segment. There are two advantages. One is the portfolio is granular. Uh, if you see the ticket size in our presentation, we have shown it, it comes to around 40, 42 lakhs. And the yields are also much better, 9 to 9.5% yield we get it and all. And majority of them is collateralized. So, but these people, they require some sort of a handholding. The credit what the bank has is to connect with the customers. So that is the reason if you are able to leverage the goodwill what we have and the legacy what we have, and we will be able to do much better in the commercial. So that is the reason this year we want to focus much on the commercial, which we plan that around 15% growth we are planning. Simultaneously on the retail, because it's also another granular portfolio, we wish to grow around 15% there. Agriculture, if you look at it, majority of the portfolio goes into agricultural gold loans. South, as you know, a lot of uh, uh, the fascination for the gold is there. They come and they pledge the gold also, if in case of a need is there. That's why we are going for the gold loan. As it is, we are growing at 16% in this. So that way, agriculture, we call it usually as a RAM sector. One is in the retail, agriculture, and MSME. These segments, we are going to grow. And now, of course, because wholesale is also equally important, but one thing we need to keep in mind, our wholesale, what we talk, may not be a real wholesale for the big banks. Because when I talk about 100, 100 crore, 100 crore may be a retail segment for a big bank, but for us, it's a wholesale. So 25 crore to about 25 crore, when we are calling it as a wholesale segment, so 25 to 125, above 120. If I also we will take, I'm not disputing the quality of the portfolio is very important. If AAA is there, AA is there, if you are satisfied, we will take it. And this segment, we would like to grow at around 12% this year. Overall, if all together, 15% growth, we want to grow in advances during this year. Coming to the stressed asset, the stressed asset pool has continued to decline for the fourth consecutive quarter um, and partially maybe due to the write-offs. Uh, do you expect that recoveries in current financial year to exceed 
uh, the the slippage is uh... i know you see when i took charge i have made it a point saying that how the business unit is important for the business equally recovery unit is equally important because if you do not get the recovery from there and all the purpose of doing business will be lost so we have created a vertical there headed by a senior general manager if you look at the sensitization what we have brought out to the people the recovery slowly started improving during the covid period the courts were not there mobility was not there and all we were unable to move out for realizing our bad loans but now that things are more normal and all we are able to dispose of these sort of uh, auctions everything is happening so for the last four quarters you can see our debt slippages are negative that is our recoveries are more than the slippages so that way four quarters when we are able to maintain we feel that the same trend we wish to continue for the further quarters this is one and likewise the existing loans what all are there we have created a collection mechanism and collection vertical we have started because stopping the flow of fresh npas is equally important that is the reason we have brought our sma 30 plus where the susceptibility of becoming npas are much more after 1 and 2 it can become an npa so we which used to be 3.5% some 2 years back we have brought it to below 1% now so that way absolute control we have that sma 30 plus when i am say it includes gold loan also which may not become npa so that way we are having a tighter control on sma 1 and 2 inflow and the recoveries these two simultaneously are happening they are outpacing the slippages what all we have and where do you see your gross npa number by the end of the year gross npa if you can see our numbers earlier is 8.5 8.8 now we have come down to 5.2 and this year we would like to bring it to below 5 it can be when i say below 5 it can be 4.2 can be below 5 also but the credit what we need to get for that is a net npa net npa is there is a three pronged strategy one can be on account of recovery huge recoveries we have got which used to be 3 4% and all net npa today we can say it is 1.91 so it is on account of the recoveries and second thing the growth in the book also is coming and third thing to some extent prudentially provisioning is also happening all three together going forward our plan is how to bring the net npa to at least 1% by the end of 2023 because we want to put this npa issue in the back burner so that at least we can focus on the growth and what all growth we are getting on that the income what all we are getting straight away without any leakages it will flow, flow straight into the net profit otherwise if provisioning is going on there and all so it is eating away the earnings what all we are making and all that's why we want to once and for all handle the net npa so that in future any slippages are there the recoveries will take care of that and uh, you are clean coming to the margins uh, now your margins expanded by uh, three bps q and q uh, to uh, 3.82% in the first quarter driven by uh, some reduction of cost while the yield on advances were almost flat given that only 30% of your loan book is linked to the external benchmark rate do you think you can sustain this level of margins no there are two components which we need to see our cost of deposits if you look at 4.09 it's a historical low for the bank and many of the banks if you compare ours is the lowest cost now we started increasing the rates and all 50 basis points we have increased in the last one one and a half months and all slowly that starts kicking in and the cost of deposits will go up but other side if you look at it 30% when you are saying the linked to ebilr the working capital portion of that what all is there already we have passed on along with the rbi as and when they have hiked the rates the term loan component majority of the loans are quarterly repricing so as and when the repricing is there we are passing it on so that way in a matter of 3 months period the whole repricing of the loan ebrr book will be completed and next book is uh, mclr mclr comes to around 55% book that way our total floating rate book is around 85% so the moment deposit cost goes up and automatically mclr also correspondingly will go up we will be able to pass on that cost also to them so that way if you look at it in a rising rate scenario we will be able to repricing our assets faster than the liabilities so that way we are earlier we were giving a guidance of 3.5 for the nim and during the after our results we thought we need to be at 3.75 and we have revised the guidance to 3.75 our intention is to maintain minimum these are the two factors what we thought assets get repriced faster and liabilities in due course at least two to three quarters you will have the benefit of it by the time things will stabilize so 3.75 with the margin you are looking at yeah so for, the guidance so for, we are keeping in mind that's why two uh, fundamental pillars on which we are working 
One is on a 15% advances growth, 3.75 NIM, and uh, so the credit cost, that is for the provisions, what all we are going to make, we are planning 1% because it used to be two and a half, something like that. Below 1%, we want to maintain the credit cost. And the slippages, which used to be three, three and a half, we want to maintain between one and one and a half. These four pillars, if we work on that, we will be able to comfortably go with ROA in the initial remarks you were mentioning. ROA, it was a dream for us to reach that number by Feb March 2023. But by February quarter, we are able to reach 1.06 and this quarter 1.09. So progressively, we'll take the ROI also forward. These four levers, effectively, we have a control on them. We are reasonably confident in the ending quarter, closing quarter of 23, we'll be able to reach ROI of 1.2 to 1.25. On that note, it was a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Babu. Thank you for Thank speaking you. to Business Standard. Thank you very much, Ms. Manajit. Thank you very much. So nice. Take care. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so high. I will achieve. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.